whiteboard, right? <laughs> so we're going to start with John 1, verse 1. Go for it, Penelope. In bold font, the eternal word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. <clears throat> in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Next bold font. John's witness, the true light. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness to that light. That was the true light which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, the world was made through him, and the word world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Next bold font. The word becomes flesh. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received, and grace for grace. For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is the, in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. Wow, that's very interesting in the New King James. I've never read that translation of that passage before. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, Alan, you took Greek, I imagine, at some point. It, Greek took me. Greek took you. <laughs> and um, when Greek took me, uh, John, the Gospel of John, was the text for, for Greek 101. Mm -hmm. Because the vocabulary is so simple. And I didn't, I didn't take Greek in seminary. I took it at... at an independent private liberal arts college, and they used the Gospel of Greek as um, as the text for uh, Greek 101. Because, as you heard, lots of repetition, easy words, word, light, life, God, the sun, um, not the sun in the sky, but the sun of the Father. Um, and so, you know, the first few weeks of Greek was translating this text. I could probably almost say at least some of it in, in Greek uh, after many, many years. But I think, though, because it is so simple that um, people assume they know what's already there or, or they assume they know what's there. And the language is simple, but the concepts are, <laughs> are weighty. They are, he uses a lot of metaphor. And another thing that you will notice in John is this contrast of everything is light, light and darkness or good and evil. Um, and some of us are not so comfortable with that. We would like more shades of gray. Um, and the saying that light is all good and darkness is all bad is not not cool with me either it's particularly if people start equating that with the shade of somebody's skin so um we'll we'll kind of set that aside but notice the light and darkness stuff um 
Related to that is blindness. We will see that as a theme. Um, and maybe we like the word illumination rather than light and dark, um, that people are, he's trying to draw people into a state of illumination, Jesus is, or John through Jesus, Jesus through, through the gospel of John is. He also contrasted John from Jesus. Right. There's the, yeah, in this passage, John and Jesus are not. So, yeah, not this, but this. We see a lot of that kind of like logic in this. Um, what else do I want to say about this bit of passage? What jumps out at you? Particularly if you were maybe reading from a different translation than Penelope was. The word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. Yes, I love that's, that's the way message. that Eugene Peterson puts it. <laughs> that's great. <clears throat> Wealth among us is come into the neighborhood. And then there is something about seeing and blindness. No one has ever seen God is in here. But in order to see God, you see the sun. And we're going to see the relationship of father and son lifted up a lot in. Um, that was one that I put up on my bulletin board that we will be looking for. Only the only the father can enable knowledge. And Jesus the, is the one who reveals the father. And that masculine language is what's there in the Greek. So that's why I'm using it here. So he, um, Jesus himself gets uh, baptized by John. Um, he calls some disciples. There is a little bit else here in, in this knowledge or, or this light and blindness stuff about secret knowledge. Jesus seems to have knowledge that other people don't. Um, it's an interesting way of narrating that you've probably noticed a few times that John would say, Oh, the disciples didn't understand this, but they understood it later. Or Jesus knew what was in this person's heart. And, and because of that, he says this. That happens in the calling of the disciples. Did you notice? There's one disciple that um, I don't mentioned other than just by name. But the calling of Nathaniel is a detail that's different from the synoptic gospels. So jump down in verse one or chapter one and um, go down to say verse 45. We have the account of, of the calling of Nathaniel in the lectionary. This was a text a few weeks ago, but I don't know if all of you are following the lectionary. So um, what is the compelling reason for Nathaniel becoming his disciple from this? If you skim it. That Jesus saw him. Uh, from it without seeing it. Yeah, Jesus has secret secret knowledge of Nathaniel. He's able to see him sitting under the fig tree. That That's, would not. Can sell I show a picture? Me. There he is under a fig tree. Okay. So I, I learned. What's he doing there? Hmm. I, I learned later that the the Jewish expression of <laughs> means you're reading and trying to uh, understand the Torah. I'm sorry, there was a little uh, distortion oh. of what you said. So it, it, there's the an Jewish expre expression of sitting under a fig tree is, that, is what I read was a Jewish expression that you're studying the Torah and trying to get to the next level, so to speak. So oh, that's, well, that's, why that's he's got, very interesting. Yeah. He's got his scrolls already. I wonder course, how that relates to Jesus cursing the fig tree. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The other thing that uh, Nathaniel says. And then they're having a heart to heart there. Uh, this, is all, this is all AI. <laughs> he, he called him he called him rabbi and said that you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Because because Jesus saw that he was under the fig tree. before. That's kind of weird to me. Don't you think that's yeah. weird? <clears throat> After Nathaniel says, can anybody, anything from Nazareth be good? <laughs> and 
And Jesus seeing him and saying, oh, here is an Israelite without any deceit in him. Maybe that's what uh, compelled him. Jesus really know. Jesus knew where I was, what I was doing, and who I was. Um, does does Nathaniel is... also Bartholomew? I, I get those two names kind of crisscrossed from time to time. I'm. I don't know. The list of the disciples in two different gospels are not identical. Yeah. So. Yeah, my note is Nathaniel is usually identified with Bartholomew, the apostle mentioned in the in the other gospels. And in oh, so they just made an assumption. There's one guy missing from this list, so maybe it's him. Well, but maybe. then another uh, Augustine says uh, Nathaniel ended up not being one of the twelve disciples because uh, he was so well versed in the in the, the Torah and that kind of stuff that he was apparently. Too argumentative or something like that. <laughs> so he yeah. kind of joined the group at first and kind of didn't, didn't quite make the cut. So there's, anyway, little tidbits of, oh, by the way, kind of stuff. Uh huh. And yet John thought this was an interesting enough story to tell it. I think it's fascinating. Sort of. the, the, yeah, yeah. The, the fig tree motif just, it started with Adam and Eve and, and it just keeps going. And, and, and later on, um, there's a note here in this that um, that Naz, though, yeah, the story about uh, Jesus had to leave his hometown because they didn't believe him and they called him a false prophet. And here he's well received. You write that that detail, yeah. huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're not going to get there yet. We're going to go to what's next, which is in chapter two, the wedding at, at Cana, story that's only in John. And this is like Jesus's launch into the public scene. Why don't we read it? Uh, who, like to, who hasn't read yet that would like to read? The I'll wedding? read it from the message. Okay, so this is chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Three days later, there was a wedding in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. Jesus and his disciples were guests also. When they started low, running low on wine at the wedding banquet, Jesus' mother told him, they're just about out of wine. Jesus said, is that any of our business, mother, yours or mine? This isn't my time. Don't push me. <clears throat> she went ahead anyway, telling the servants, whatever he tells you, do it. Six stoneware water pots were there, used by the Jews for ritual washings. Each held 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus hmm. ordered the servants, fill the pots with water, and they filled them to the brim. Now fill your pitchers and take them to the host, Jesus said, and they did. When the host tasted the water that had become wine, he didn't know what had just happened, but the servants, of course, knew. He called out to the bridegroom. Everyone I know begins with their finest wines, and after the guests have had their fill, brings in the sheep stock. But you've saved the best till now. This act in Cana of Galilee was the first sign Jesus gave, the first glimpse of his glory, and his disciples believed in him. So sign. This is, um, this is one of the themes that we're going to see in the Gospel of John, the signs that Jesus does. So if we again think about illumination, signs point to something. Um, point to who who Jesus is, what is his purpose. What strikes you about this story? There's some, there's a lot of uh, funny details in this. His mother goes ahead after she tells him, not, he tells her not to. We get a lot of a little comedy in here between uh, Jesus and his mother. Mm -hmm. I was interested in <clears throat> in the fact that the the wine vats were uh, the were used for uh, ritual bathing, mm -hmm. and Jesus then you know uses the wine as his as his uh, blood. Well, we don't get the blood part yet. We will get that part of the theology before we get to the end of um, our readings for this week. 
it strikes me that it must have been an awful big wedding. That's a lot of wine. That's oh, a yeah. lot of wine, isn't it? And they fill them up to the brim. In John, Jesus says, I came that they have might have life and have it abundantly. That's John 10.10. 10. Um, this is the communion that we have. We do not have a Last Supper, words of institution kind of thing of communion. We have the wedding at Cana and the turning of water into wine. And we will have, and we'll get to it in a few minutes, um, the interpretation of the feeding of the 5,000. Those two events are the communion theology of John. Oh. So this thing about the cleansing, the connection to you know, sac that kind of a sacrament or that kind of new life thing that comes to us, the idea of a wedding, a celebration, um, and... You know, otherwise, what in the world is this story in here? Some of us might, you know, shake our head, heads and say, why bother with a wedding, making that be your big place that you come out? Um, I, it comes I, out in this unusual kind of indirect way. He doesn't touch the, the, the water jars. He tells somebody else to do the work. You fill it up with water. You serve it and it becomes wine. So there's kind of this hands off and also sort of um, dialogue. That's the other thing that you find in the gospel of John is a lot of dialogue. You could write the whole gospel as a, as a screenplay. There's a lot of talking back and forth and, um, and transformation happens as a result of the, of the conversations that he has. I read that that was his first miracle. Yeah. Yeah. First miracle, or or in John, the word is sign. These are the signs. So the first yeah. miracle, we'll remember that the first miracle in in Mark was casting out demons. He does it over and over in Mark. Uh, he comes onto the scene in Luke by coming into the synagogue and opening up the scroll of Isaiah and saying, this has been fulfilled in your hearing. And here in John, he shows up at a wedding different mm -hmm. the, other the next thing he does what does he do gospel. next just keep scanning through chapter two but before we leave the the wedding sure. thing Go ahead, David. the other gospels um talk about um like parables of the bridegroom and this kind of stuff that that's a kind of a somewhat repeated uh language mm -hmm. i'm wondering if this is a sort of a slide that same kind of an idea of jesus and I can't actually remember how those things work out, but <laughs> the, the analogy of the bridegroom, is that supposed to be Jesus kind of with us now? Is that, is that where that's going? I, I can't remember how that actually uh, works out, but it's, it's used from time to time. Mm -hmm. You know, be, have your candle ready. Over over. There's mm -hmm. the, the, the bridegroom could come at Terrible any moment. Of being ready for the, for the bridegroom coming, the, the bridesmaids and yeah. Yeah, well, give me oil for the lamp and all that sort of thing. Let's try for the Gospel of John to just take it as if we're not getting access to all those other stories. All right, we'll just and we'll appreciate take it as it is. him for who he is and not, oh, sorry about that, not think that he's trying to interpret somebody else's um, take on the Gospel story, but just doing his own. And we can raise some questions and go, hmm, that's interesting. But we won't, we probably won't get answers. Maybe you'll have to ask St. Peter when you get to heaven or something. <laughs> so after the wedding, then Jesus goes to Jerusalem. He doesn't do that in the other gospels. He doesn't go to Jerusalem until the very end. Right. In John, it's Passover time. You go to you go to Jerusalem. And he does this outrageous cleansing of the temple event. That was fast. Which happened in, during Holy Week. In the, other in the synoptics, it happens during Holy Week. It's even uh, possibly the, the motivation for getting him arrested. Here's this guy that's causing all of this chaos. Here, he does it as the launching of his ministry. 
done this wedding thing and now I'm coming to this Passover uh, celebration and I'm stirring up things in the temple. But the reason for it is different here than, and the kind of conversation that they have about what's going on is different from the others. Did you catch that? Destroy this temple and in three days I'll raise it up. And the disciples didn't understand what he meant. The Jewish leaders didn't understand what he meant. But later the disciples, so always talking about the temple of his body. Again, the the commentary by John in the middle of this. The but reason also... that we think Jesus's ministry was three years long is because of the gospel of John. Oh, right. Because he, he comes to back to Passover. He comes yeah. back for another. He's oh, it's because he Not comes to Jerusalem yeah. for all these different times. You could read the other Gospels and think it only happened in one year. Uh -huh. year Again, David, we don't have to raise the question of which is correct, which stories are right, which details are, are the facts. John has a Fine. reason. And we just want to try and find out what John's reason is for telling the story that he tells it. But he also told them, stop turning my father's house into a shopping mall. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Maybe so that is his point at the very beginning. We're here to celebrate um, life and um, and that the you know the the good stuff is for now. Um, good, the best for last, or what, however you want to call the um, the significance of the turning the wine water into wine. Um, and now this, what's the purpose of the temple? Isn't, isn't he also, um, <clears throat> isn't he also pointing out that the, the, uh, poor and the people who did not have much money to make sacrifice were being cheated? You know, it doesn't actually say that here, but we've had many people who interpret it that way. Mm -hmm. Want to read exactly what's there and say... Well, don't make my father's house a business. It doesn't say that it's illegal business necessarily. Oh, oh, so then there's there in um, verse 17 there in this this chapter about cleaning the uh, cleanses the temple. Um, then his he says, do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. <clears throat> And then the disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house has eaten me up. Is that in the Old Testament, someone who says that? Yeah, it's Psalm 69, verse 9. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, and anytime they say scripture in the Gospels, they're probably referring to the Jewish scripture. Uh-huh, right. yeah, yeah, of course. And Jesus most often quotes either the Psalms or Deuteronomy or Isaiah. Those are his okay. three favorites. Oh, that's good to know. Um, if you've got a nice annotated Bible, like I do, it told me exactly what verse that was. Yeah, uh -huh. okay. You're right. At the bottom, it says Psalm 69.9. We have another. The next thing that happens, another unique, um, unique to John story about Jesus meeting with Nicodemus. If you guys were following the lectionary, this was the text for this last Sunday. Or some of this was. What strikes you about the story of Jesus and Nicodemus? Jesus said, you're not listening. <laughs> you're not listening. <laughs> what what translation of what verse is that? It's, uh, the message is it's probably verse 5. Verse 5. <laughs> well, he comes at night. I think that's... That's Christian clear. Uh, when we had light and darkness stuff, Nicodemus shows up at night Sneaky. in secret. It seems that he becomes sort of a secret, uh, at least admirer of Jesus, if not follower of Jesus. He's one of the um, uh, temple leaders, um, and he will reappear near the end of John 
with Joseph of Arimathea, and they will ask for the body of Jesus and arrange for him to be buried. Right, uh, Arimathea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the only other time that we'll find Nicodemus. He has this conversation where he doesn't seem to understand what the heck that Jesus is saying, right? He's not the only he kind one. of lays out his theology in this chapter. This is another one of those um, dialogues. It's not totally clear to me whether Nicodemus is transformed as a result of this dialogue, um, whether he gets it, but Jesus gets to put it out there, this stuff yeah. about life and light and being born which translation do you have born from above born again in the footnotes, in the footnotes it says from above from above is the, the literal the yeah, literal yeah. greek you got me going on the footnotes now yeah <laughs> but it, what it does your translation off. say it, it says again but in the again. footnotes it says uh above and boy that's that's got a little different uh, flavor. It does yeah, have a different you... flavor, doesn't it? And there's a lot of stuff here in John 3 that people think they know exactly what it means. Like, we use the, the, the phrase saved. Right. Um, what is eternal life? Judgment. A new life. The new life, yes. Oh, he's got water again. And and this was after his bap after Jesus' baptism by John, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And right after this, there's more stuff about baptizing. Oh John, yeah, there it is. John is baptizing. Well, we've got. John the Baptist after he cleanses the temple, though. Mm -hmm. I guess uh, I just hadn't tied. I just hadn't thought about it in that consecutive order before. I guess John re reappears. He has not. John is still out there baptizing. Mm -hmm. In the other gospels, he kind of makes one appearance, and then he gets you know arrested, and maybe the account of him being killed by Herod. Um, but here we return to, to John and John's disciples, as well as Jesus' disciples, and questions about baptizing. Oh, there was even a snake reference in here, too. Oh, yes, the lifting of the snake in the desert uh, by Moses. There's lots we could go into, and I've got to kind of keep going and do this survey. I want to get to John 4 now. <laughs> Another... Another unique story. Jesus and the woman at the well in Samaria. Oh, that's a good one, yeah. It's a great one. So this is another conversation uh, okay. between Jesus and somebody who doesn't get it for a while. There's secret knowledge. Secret knowledge, yes. Jesus has that. his knowledge of this woman. And that's the thing that compels her to go out and, and witness to him. Here's a guy who knew everything about me. Yeah. And another thing I didn't know was that the disciples did the bap actual baptizing, not Jesus himself. Oh, yes, yes. That was happening. But we don't have any account of Jesus baptizing anybody. And water. So we've had the water in into wine at Cana. We've had the water of the baptism. And now we have the the water in the well. And water in the well. Yeah. Jesus saying, if you'd asked me, I would have given you water that bubbles up to eternal life. What else strikes you about this story? The disciples also don't get it. Why is he talking to her? They won't they won't ask. Then did somebody bring him some food? And then he the gets disciples to talking didn't about get it. But I get the impression that the woman did. 
She got something, didn't she? Could this man be the Christ? That seems kind of random. Uh, the disciples say, you should eat something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there are lots of funny little details like <laughs> it just that. just pops out there. And then Jesus uses that as saying, but I'm being fed by doing the will of the one who sent me. Oh, well, wasn't wasn't the story that the disciples had already gone into the town to get some food? They get eat. some food, right. Yeah. yeah. That's why he was by himself. Yeah. And then they're like, okay. He eat. came back and, and there he was talking with us. I don't need food. I'm having this conversation with this woman. Right. I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Do you ever feel that way? When you are in the zone doing what God wants you to do, do you forget lose sense of time? I lose sense of time and I um, also um, have a hard time telling the days of the week because I don't have a re regular routine schedule mm -hmm. going on every week. Yeah. Like I, would, like I would if I was in school or stuff uh, or uh, Helping the teachers. Mm -hmm. but. I forget to eat when I get really in the zone. <clears throat> so I, I'm identifying with Jesus here for a moment here. That uh, having, having these engaging conversations is food to me. Um, now Jesus doesn't say when he calls the disciples follow me and i will make you fishers of of people like he does in the synoptics instead he talks about harvest in this story yeah. and the harvest is all of these samaritans that they he the woman brings out to him and they invite him to stay for two days and everybody in the town comes to believe I think there's an important statement in verse 23. Uh, mm -hmm. It's who you are and the way you live that count before God. Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> and the next verse, God is God is spirit. It's necessary to worship God in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this debate that she tried to engage him in about whether Jerusalem is the place or... Uh, Mount Gerizim, the place it, that the the Samaritans had as their holy place, which is the holy place. He says it's in your heart. That's kind of a big transition for a lot of people back then. Yeah. There was a personification that this had to be here. You know, you go to Moses went to the mountain or out or whatever and you know the burning bush and that was only going to happen on the mountain it wasn't going to happen down below you know you had to go to some place or stand in front of something or whatever and so, closer to heaven that's a and yet he also went to jerusalem to the temple and wanted that place to be a holy place now that's that's a that's a big transition there that mm -hmm. a lot of people are probably like what you can't say that Then we get to the second miraculous sign. And this one, we I don't think is in our um, electionary. We we have the, the healing of Jairus's daughter, mm -hmm. which you might remember from the study of Mark, where we have it, it sandwiched with the story of the woman um, uh, healed with the 12 year hemorrhage right in the middle. Um, instead, this is a boy who is sick not a girl, but another uh, official. This one's a, my translation just says he's a royal official in Capernaum. From mm -hmm. the king's court. What, what do you notice about that mir miracle story, which is said, they say, this is the second miraculous sign that Jesus did. 
He didn't have to touch or even come in contact with the boy. He didn't go see the child, didn't lift <clears throat> him up and say, it is another one of these kind of indirect by means of the conversation with the man who asked for the help. Jesus just says, go home. And there's this, he makes the connection that it happens at the moment he turned around to go home and had the conversation with Jesus. That was the moment that his son's fever broke. It even says here that it's the second sign. Right, it does say that. And yet the next thing is a, is a healing, and they don't say this is the third sign. Um, the next story at the beginning of chapter five is the man who was uh, either Bethesda or Bethsaida, depends on your translation, I believe, um, at the pool who was paralyzed. Mm, more water. More water. And it's indirect again. Jesus says, pick up your mat and walk. And he does. So just, and they have this conversation. Do you want to get well? I don't have anybody to put me in there. Jesus says, get up. And then there's more conversation with other people. Who told you? Who, who did? The, the Jewish authorities say, you're not supposed to carry in your mat on Sabbath. And. The guy says, well, a man made me well. He said, pick it up. Well, who did that? I don't know. <laughs> and then Jesus mysteriously appears again and says, you've been made well. Don't sin anymore. Something worse will happen to you. And that's how Jesus gets outed. Guy goes back to the Jewish leaders and says, it was Jesus. He's the one who did this to, to heal me. And they're upset. Because it happens on the Sabbath. No good deed goes unpunished. No good deed goes undone. Yeah. And they started deciding probably at that point that he had to go. But we got a lot of ways to go yet. Yeah. Then there is some stuff about father and son. That's another theme that how we find Jesus or get to know the father is through the son. The son yes. gives life to anyone he chooses. Neither he nor the father shuts anyone out. Hmm. What verse is that? Uh, probably 20 or 21. And we have a very similar verse to uh, John 3.16 in John 5.24. This is my translation. I assure you that whoever hears my word and believes in the one who sent me has eternal life and won't come under judgment, but is passed from death to life. I'm going to jump ahead to chapter six to the other part of uh, communion theology that we get out of here. Feeding of the 5,000. Similar in the description of the, the miracle that there are leftovers that are picked up and all of that, but there's a, a kind of... Um, interruption in that story when jesus uh goes off to the mountain the disciples get in the boat he comes to them across walking on the water that story is a little bit different from some of the other storms on the sea stories in that uh the moment that uh he gets into the boat they've reached the land 
Who knows what that's about? And the crowd realizes, wait, we saw the disciples leave in the boat, but Jesus didn't leave with the boat. And they're like, curious about all of that. Jesus doesn't tell them what's going on. He's always deflecting in his conversations in John, I find. They ask him a question and he gives them a different answer. You were looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate all the food you wanted. <laughs> and this is where he gets to the next thing is that I am the bread of life. Work That's for the his. food the Son of Man provides. What, where's that? 21. Oh, no, I'm sorry. 27. Oh, skipping over the walking on the water. Okay. We're going to skip over the walk of water and go back to the commentary on what happened when he fed them with the loaves. The part about Peter walking out the medium doesn't appear here. Right. That does not happen here. But another water reference. Another water reference, yeah. Walking on the water. I, I missed all these multiple. So it starts with water and it just keeps on going. And then when they go talking about the bread, they say we want the bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They say, give us this bread. It's just like the woman who said, give me that water that I won't ever be thirsty again. They want this bread that, so that they won't be hungry. And Jesus' answer is in verse 35, I am the bread of life. We're going to be looking for the other I am statements in the Gospel of John. He will. There will be many of them, but this is the first of them. And in verse 38, he says specifically, I came down from heaven. Yeah. So I'm the bread of life. I'm the bread that comes down from heaven. And the opposition grumbles and says, isn't this Joseph's son? How can he say I've come from heaven? Nothing good comes from Nazareth. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> he repeats himself. I am the bread of life in verse 48. And then he gets weird. The theology of communion is here. Eat my flesh. Drink my blood. And we're not anywhere near Holy Week in the Last Supper. We're here way early in John talking about the meaning of what will become communion. Laura, do you have to know whether there were any other uh, faiths in the, that part of the world at that time that practiced anything similar to communion? No, I'm not aware of that. I I it on Jake 50. Yeah. And it said, "Would do you want us to use cellular yeah. instead? And I said, yes. And then I was able to get on Zoom. Oh. It was weird. So you're using cellular? Yeah. Hmm. Or, I don't think. <laughs> Good job. I guess you're just listening yeah. in all the time. Fixed until about 1030 tonight. I'm muting her because I think she's just having a back back conversation there, side conversation. So one more little detail that maybe you noticed is after he has this conversation about you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. Um, if you eat this bread, you will live forever. There were disciples who said, this is too harsh. <laughs> I don't get it. And some of them leave. Verse 66. There were some, a bunch of disciples that, that left and no longer accompanied him. And Jesus is left with 12. And 
Last little detail of the reading for today, verse 70, or 71 rather, he knows the identity of Judas, that he is the betrayer. More secret knowledge that he doesn't let them know about. Except he says, it's one of you. One of you's, my translation says, one of you is a devil. Uh, just before that, maybe Peter gets it slightly a little bit. At least in the moment. You have the words of eternal life. Where, Lord, where else would we go? We believe that you are God's holy one. So yes, he gets to shine there for a moment. And at least in this one, he doesn't immediately get called Satan. <laughs> yeah. Judas gets called a devil or, or whatever. Um, so Simon gets, Simon Peter has his, his moment of confession of who Jesus is. That gets us to the end of um, the first six chapters of John. And we're going to repeat next week where we see these same themes. So we've lifted some stuff up for you to look at as you read over the next uh, five chapters. So there was the themes of light and darkness, blindness and secret knowledge. Um, the idea of signs, that Jesus' miracles are called signs. What are they pointing to? We're going to ask that question. Um, look for the dialogue, the kind of transformational dialogues that Jesus has, the indirect kinds of ways that he does miracles, um, and these things that he says about um, the Father, that he's the one that reveals who the Father is. The other thing I didn't lift up was, um, and this gets mixed up in different translations. Um, often the older translations say the Jews were the ones that were arguing with, with um, Jesus. He's referring to the Jewish authorities or the temple leaders. Um, and I think some misinterpretation of the Gospel of John has has led people to some anti-Semitic sentiments, which are not really there. But um, when Jesus, when John says the Jews, and in Greek it would be that, but he was referring to those that were in power. Um, the Pharisees. Which might have been the Pharisees, or would have been, the Pharisees would have been the, the foil in um, the synoptics. Are there... Um, Things that you or people that you'd like us to pray about tonight before we close for the evening. Sounds like we should pray for Robin, even though we don't know um, how, how her surgery went. Hopefully we will get a report by next week. Karen, how are you doing? Coming along? Mm -hmm. They're asking how you're doing. I'm doing okay. I'm just a little tired. Yeah. Had a long day. And she's done a lot of walking today. Good for you. You got to work it. Oh. Yep. Yeah. How's the weather in Iowa today? We uh -huh. had a high of about, uh, I think, in the mid 60s. Oh, no rain and a low in the 40s. The spring is coming. Yeah. Yes. Although tonight is supposed to be a dramatic drop and we're supposed to get down close to freezing. Oh. <laughs> we'll see what happens. And maybe some rain and maybe some thunder. But you never know. <laughs> yeah. March is, March is a, fin a, Capricious. a fickle month, right? Right. Yes. We live through some pretty serious drought years in Iowa. Yeah. Some pretty cold. It is, here it too. Is yeah, it is going to be. It is going to be if the rains don't happen in April. Mm -hmm. We had one winter where it didn't get above freezing for 50 some days. Ugh. How many years were you in Iowa, Alan? 10. Mm.
Well, shall I wrap us up with some prayer or can I invite someone else to pray us out? I vote for you. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> God, thank you for this chance to uh, get together and uh, wrestle with uh, yet another one of the Gospels. We thank you for John's witness, for his unique way of 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 communicating the meaning of who Jesus was to him and for the power of this uh, simple language to transform people's hearts. We pray for understanding and for the ability to to understand uh, to to walk in in the ways that you have called us to walk to walk in in the place of illumination to walk in spirit and in truth we pray in jesus name amen mm -hmm. amen thank you you did it you got us through you, all Mark. six all six yeah chapters. it's a, it's no a, small quite job. a race to get through we're not going to have a lot of slow down and and untangle one ver one story because there's so many great ones in the gospel of john i got i got lots of good notes i got two sticky notes of of notes excellent <laughs> all right we'll see you next week thanks so much okay, okay thank you have a good Stay night mm -hmm. bye